What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today we are looking at Glassnode's Insight, week 33 of on-chain analysis. Let's get into it. Before we start, I want to kindly invite you to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Thank you for all those who have, I appreciate it. While you're down there, be sure to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up. Um, also, follow me over on Library. It's a great place as YouTube starts to uh, become more based around censorship. Odyssey and Library are great places to support censorship resistance. And please feel free to leave a comment, any sort of uh, uh, comment you have. I, my only request is that you please be civil in your discourse. Kindness and compassion are absolutely free. If you take a moment and edit your response through those filters, then you can be a helper to make this world a better place. The one you probably want to receive back into your reflection. Okay, let's get into it. <clears throat> the Bitcoin market powers higher, supported by a growing body of evidence on chain that a bullish disbelief rally is in effect. The uptrend in Bitcoin's price has continued this week, rallying from a low of 42,924 into a daily high of 47,831. The market has shown remarkable strength since the, since the local bottom of 29,700 set in July, suggesting strong fundamental price uh, or spark, sorry, strong fundamental spot demand underlies the rally. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that there was buying power right around that 30k level. This week, we analyze the on-chain metrics related to the mining market, capital inflows, coin accumulation, and net real unrealized profit and loss. Through a complete assessment of the on-chain market structure, we can establish whether the prob probabilities favor the current market strength as a, pre uh, a prelude to a bear or whether a bull market disbelief rally is in full swing. <clears throat> Here we can see the range in which we traded with this is the uh, green area at the far right. Miner revenues increase as the Bitcoin mining great migration continues the miners transition out of China. We have started to see a recovery in hash rate from the low set in July. Hash rate peaked out at around 180 at a hash since uh, per second in May before falling 50%. This provides insight into a magnitude of affected miners as being roughly half of the network. Over the course of the last two months, hash rate has increased by around 25% from the lows, suggesting hash rate equivalent to around 12.5% of the affected miners have come back online. The network is currently mining at a rate of 112.5 at a hash per second. So we see the drops and getting back to it. So the hash rate is the, um, the blue one coming right in through here. In response, the hash ribbons, which attempt to model where stress enters the mining market, have commenced another positive crossover. The hash ribbons are formed by taking the 30-day and 90-day moving average of hash rate with the following signals. 30-day crossing below the 90-day is generally a signal of incoming stress entering the mining market as hash rate comes offline rapidly. This can create additional sell pressure as miners are generating less income to uh, cover their CAPEX, CAPEX, and OPEX, OPEX costs. The 30-day crossing above the 90 in general is generally a sign of hash rate recovery and minor capitulation. After this, the remaining miners have grown their share of the market and thus earn more BTC per hash. <clears throat> you can watch this ribbon here over time. Very small and very close together, this 30 and 90 day. But we are, this is uh, pointing out a few different points in time where um, things have recovered. We have recovery here, and we're just seeing some recovery here. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
We can see, or we can confirm this is the case using the workbench tool and taking the ratio between the total minor revenue in BTC and active hash rate. This presents the average BTC earned per hash of mining power. Since the halving in May of 2020, aggregate miner income has declined from around 9.5 BTC per hash to a low of 5.6 BTC per hash in May. As protocol difficulty adjusted, adjusted in response to the Great Migration, miners who remained online have now seen their BTC income grow by 57% per hash to around 8.8 .8 Bitcoin per hash. As a result of this, we have seen the net balance position of miners continue to increase over the last two months. The net growth of miners, miner balances now has hit plus 5,000 BTC per month, which demonstrates a net reduction in compulsory self-side pressure res sourced from miners. <clears throat> Absorbing capital inflows. One of the most important on-chain metrics for Bitcoin is the realized cap which is the on-chain equivalent to the market cap. It is calculated by valuing the each coin at the price when it was last spent, representing an aggregate cost basis for the market. The realized cap can be considered as follows. Uptrends indicate the coin accumulated at cheaper prices are being spent, likely sold, and the market must absorb that sell-side pressure to uh, trend higher. Downtrends indicate that coins accumulated at higher prices are being sold for a net realized loss and is typically of, uh, typical of bearish markets. The realized cap started trending higher in late July and has reached a new all-time high of $379 billion. <clears throat> Given spot prices have continued to rally, this indicates that new capital is flowing into Bitcoin and the market is capable of absor absorbing that sell-side pressure. <clears throat> the net realized profit and loss metric demonstrates that since the recent local low of around $29,000, the market has realized profits between a half a billion and $1.5 billion per day. This follows an extended period of net realized losses through May to July that represented a likely capitulation event. Market demand is currently absorbing coins sold at realized profits of similar magnitude uh, to the period in November-December 2020, prior to the main bull run. If the market can continue to sustain capital inflows at this level, it sets up a strong base and justification for continued market strength. <clears throat> Identifying these things that it just said. All right. If we take a look at the average value of transactions flowing in and out of exchanges, we get a gauge of the net buy and sell side action. Prior to the sell off in May, both inflows and outflows converged around an average transaction value of $35,000. This level was largely representative of the average exchange uh, flows in Q1 and Q2 of 2021. Following the May sell off, both inflows and outflows dropped to $14,000 or 14, yeah, $14,000 and $20,000 respectively. These smaller average transaction sizes generally suggest an influx of smaller traders were both shaken out and stepping uh, into the buy the dip, stepping into buy the dip. <clears throat> Since the recent $29,000 low, average outflow uh, has risen back to $35,000, which is a substantially higher divergence from than the average inflow value of $24,000. Overall, this suggests larger buyer, larger size buyers are accumulating and smaller size traders are on the distribution side. This aligns well with the exchange net positive change metric, which demonstrates a net outflow has persisted since the start of July. Net outflows from exchange balances is currently occurring at a rate between 50,000 and 100,000 Bitcoin per day, or sorry, per month. This compares to the, to the approximately 140,000 140, Bitcoin in net exchange inflows through May to June we highlighted in our week 31 edition of this newsletter. Hogler's return to profit. 
As prices rally, a larger portion of the coin supply returns to profit. This provides us with an opportunity to assess both how many coins were accumulated in particular price ranges and also assess the aggregate market incentive to sell and realize gains. Since the low of 29,700 set in July, the current price of $47,000 is a total of 19.2% of the circulating coin supply has realized uh, has returned to profit. This means that around 3.6 million Bitcoin were last spent and thus have an on-chain cost basis in this price range. From this, we can deduce that a very significant volume of Bitcoin has been accumulated in this price range. Note also how much larger this jump in profitable supply uh, change is when compared to January, where prices were in the same $30,000 to $40,000 range. This indicates that on net, approximately 1.4 million additional bit Bitcoin have been revalued within this price range since then. The net unrealized profit loss metric provides a cyclical oscillator, oscillator mapping the magnitude of unrealized gains losses as a ratio of the total market cap value. The NUPL metric, which uh, net unrealized profit loss, has just broken above 0.5, indicating that the total coin supply is currently holding unrealized profits equivalent to 50% of the market cap. Historically, the NEPL value of 0.5 is reached following a deep correction in two instances. <clears throat> One, a bear market relief rallies, as, we, as it was the case in 2014 and 2018 at the end of the mini bull run in 2019. Coin holders take exit liquidity, their profitable sell coins and prices roll over. Bull market uh, disbelief rallies, at which point a modest correction usually follows an NUPL value of 0.5 before the bull run continues. Similar spending behavior governs as in bearish relief rallies with investors uh, taking profit into strength. The difference is that the market carries on upwards afterward, upwards afterwards, creating additional FOMO buy pressure. Finally, the STH NUPL, which uh, short-term holder um, indicator of the same, which filters only for short-term holders has returned to profitability. This means that coins moved within the last five months or so are on, uh, on net slightly above their aggregate cost basis, similar to the standard NUPL metric. These events are uncommon, but tend to precede explosive moves in a bear or bull market. With the body of evidence we have outlined above across minor recovery, strong exchange outflows and relatively large accum accumulation below, the scales have been most likely low or sorry, most likely now tipped in favor of the current market conditions being a bull market disbelief rally. <clears throat> Okay, that's it. So with the body of evidence, I'm just going to read that one more time because they seem to, so this in my reading of this each week, seems like glass has been pretty neutral, but this time they're saying with the body of evidence we have outlined above across minor recovery, strong, strong exchange outflows, and relatively large accumulation below the scales have most likely now tipped in favor of the current market conditions being a bull market disbelief rally. Well, there you have it. They are taking a stance saying that um, we're probably going to continue going. All right. We will see because uh, no one can read the future, but using these sorts of data help build decisions so thank you so much for this week i appreciate you sticking around watch for more videos like subscribe share with a friend i appreciate you all love you all peace